So <clears throat> last class, we discussed the importance of being able to send data securely. We looked at the Caesar cipher, which is where you encode a message by shifting all the letters three steps forward in the alphabet. And we also looked at a non-substitution cipher called the Bifid cipher. And the reason it's not substitution is because each letter doesn't always get encoded as the same letter, right? <clears throat> so Bifid um, involved a keyword and a five by five grid where you filled in most of the alphabet, everything except J. Um, today we're going to discuss two more encryption methods. They're called Visionaire and Auto Key. Okay, so just like last class, these materials have all been adapted from um, James Hamblin, another community college professor. Okay, so before we tackle these two new ciphers, we need to take a quick detour into the arithmetic of a clock. So if it's 11 o'clock now, what time will it be in five hours? 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Why won't it, why isn't it 16 o'clock? Nope, I don't want military time. So in, in typical arithmetic, we would, it would, 11 plus 5 would be 16, right? But we're in a 12-hour system where there are, the only the numbers 1 through 12 exist. So I could write 11 plus 5, and if I'm dealing clock arithmetic and not regular arithmetic, I would say this is 4. Because right? it takes one hour to get to noon, and then... Uh, four more hours to get to four o'clock. All right. How, what time will it be um, in 50 hours? If you start at 11, what time will it be 50 hours from now? One o'clock. How'd you figure it out? Yeah, every 24 hours, it's exactly the same time. So you would say, okay, 11 plus 24 gets you back to 11 plus 24 gets you back to 11 again, and we've are, now we've got, gone 48 hours, so now you just have to go two more hours, and it's 1 o'clock. So I would say 11 plus 50 is 1, right? Kind of, kind of weird looking, but when we're dealing with a clock, this is the truth. Okay? When you're dealing with time, this is how we write it. So the equation isn't true in normal arithmetic, so we actually have a notation to let people know that the arithmetic being perform is being performed on a clock. And to do that, we add an extra line to the equal sign, and then we would write in parentheses mod 12 to tell people this is on a 12-hour clock. Right? And same thing with 11 plus 50. Add another line to the equal sign, and we'd write mod 12, because we're doing arithmetic on the clock, a 12-hour clock. So mod stands for modulus. It captures the fact that we're working on a clock that has 12 numbers on it. So 7 plus 23 on a 12-hour clock, 6, because 7 plus 24 would get you back to 7. We're one hour short of that, so it's 6. All right, so if you do, what are all the possible answers? If I ask you any arithmetic problem on a 12-hour clock, what could the answers be? 1 through 12. That's all you can get. Okay. So we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, okay, so now I'm going to rename these because, of course, uh, not perfect the way it is. So <clears throat> I'm going to rename them um, so that the 12, the very top, the starting point of time, right, when we say, like, midnight, that's, like, the start of the day. Instead of calling it 12, we're going to call it 0 because it's the start. So instead of 12, I'm going to call that guy 0. So what would 4 plus 8 be on a 12-hour clock that has a 0 instead of a 12? 0, yeah. 4 o'clock plus 8 hours would get you to midnight, right? 
or noon, whichever, um, which is the starting point, zero. All right, so as you have already told me, when you're working on a 12-hour clock or mod 12, you can subtract as many 12s as you need to. We've been adding and subtracting 24s, which is just 12 twice, right? So you could add and subtract as many 12s as you need to in order to get an answer that's in this list. Right? So you can subtract 12s, you can add 12s, and it'll always give you the exact same time or the exact same position on the clock. <clears throat> so sometimes you have to add 12s to get, if you have a subtraction problem, if you say 7 o'clock minus 16 hours, like what time was it 16 hours before 7 o'clock? Well, what is 7 minus 16 in standard arithmetic? Negative 9. 7 minus 16 is negative 9, right? So I'll just write that over here. So where would negative 9, what position is that on the clock? 3, how'd you get that? Um, well, I took the, the 7 o'clock mm -hmm. and I minus the 12 o'clock. Okay, to get you back to 7. To yeah. And then I minus four more because twelve plus four is sixteen. Great approach. That's great. So if we want to know sixteen hours before, we could say, well, twelve hours before it was seven. Because you can add and subtract twelve hours, get to exactly the same place. And then you just subtract four more hours. Seven minus four is three. So or you can do the problem in standard arithmetic. Seven minus sixteen is negative nine you can always add or subtract 12, right? So if I take negative 9, add 12, I get 3. Negative 9 plus 12 is 3. So you can do it either way. Really, I just did the same thing you did, but in a different order. Yeah. All right, so this new arithmetic is called modular arithmetic. It works with any modulus greater than 1. So we've been using 12 because that's a place where we see modular arithmetic used. So that's how I introduced it. But we can have a mod any number other than 12. We're going to be encoding all the letters of the alphabet. So what do you think, what, mo what modulus are we going to use? 26. 26. Okay. So each letter of the alphabet we're going to represent as a number from 0 to 25. That's 26 numbers, right? Instead of 1 through 26, we're going to go 0 through 25. Just like with the numbers of a clock, we changed it from 1 to 12 to 0 through 11. So A is going to be 0, and we're going to go up through Z. Z is going to be 25. This is a really handy table. Help us with our calculations. There's another copy of this table on page 5. You can cut that one out and bring it with you to the test, or you can... Um, just write it out on your reference sheet. Yes? Sure, yeah. You can think of it as 0 through 11. Yeah, yeah so it was 1 through 12. We changed the 12 to a 0 because 12 is really the starting time. So it's really 0 to 11. All right, so we've got A is 0. And this is a really, really common mistake that I see on this first test, is that people will encode A as 1, right? And then everything is off by 1. So A is 0. Start at 0. OK, so I just got another copy of the alphabet up here with its uh, equivalent numbers. Remember that the Caesar cipher just adds 3 to each letter of a message? You move three, three steps to the right. So A, one step would take it to B, another step takes it to C, and a third step takes it to D. So A goes to D. We're going to just, we're going to redo the Caesar cipher, but we're just going to um, sort of frame it in terms of numbers instead of just lining up um, A with the correct letter. So we're going to think of moving three steps to the right as adding three to each letter. Okay, so I'm going to encode the word daybreak using the Caesar cipher 
and modular arithmetic. So I've got this grid here, and I, again, for the test, I'll provide you with um, a grid. I won't have directions on what to do here, but you'll have a grid to organize your work. All right, so I put my word down here, day break. OK, then I'm going to change each of these letters to a number based on my grid up here, the 0 to 25. So D is 3, A is 0, Y is 24, B is 1, R is 17, E is 4, 0, and K is 10. All right, and then I have this thing here that says keyword. My keyword for the Caesar cipher is the letter D, right? Because A goes to D. So I'm just adding D here. So it's D, 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 D. Okay, so all those Ds become threes. Where the Ds come from? So in the Caesar cipher, it's a shift three to the right, right? So A goes to D. So I am shifting everything by three. So you don't even need to write the Ds if you don't want to. Just leave it blank and just say the number is three that I'm going to add to everything because I'm shifting three to the right. Okay, now... Because I'm shifting three to the right, I have to add these, right? Take the original number, add three, and that would move you three places further down in the alphabet. So three plus three would give me six. The, the scientific ones? Um, Okay, so 3 plus 3 is 6, so that moves D to G, right? That's three places later in the alphabet, because 6 is G. All right, so let's just add them all. 0 and 3 is 3. 24 and 3 is 27. 1 and 3 is 4. 17 and 3 is 20. 4 and 3 is 7. 0 and 3 is 3. 10 and 3 is 13. And then I'm going to change each of these numbers back to letters. So 6 is G, 3 is D. Ooh, what should 27 be? B, why B? Yeah, if you go back around, Z is 25, which means that A would be 26 and B would be 1. Without having to wrap around, though, without having to picture that, you can get there by, at, you can always add or subtract 26 to any number and you'll land in the same place. Just like on a clock, you can always add or subtract 12 and you'll always land in the same place. Because there are 26 letters, if you add or subtract 26, you'll land in the same place. Okay. So 27, I have to subtract 26 here and I get 1. Whoops, which is... 27 minus 26 is 1, and that corresponds to the letter B. Now, if your number is already between 0 and 25, you can just go right to the letter phase. Right? And if it's too big or too small, you could add or subtract 26. All right, so then 4, that's the letter E. 20 is U. 7 is H. 3 is D. And 13 is N. So this is my encoded message, right? It's supposed to be unreadable. That's the whole idea is we are disguising the message daybreak. And now it looks like just a bunch of random letters. So notice you can add or subtract 26, not 25, right? Because this is mod 26, even though the numbers go up to 25, it's mod 26 because we have a zero, right? So you can always add or subtract 26 to get a number between zero and 25. All right, so to decode a Caesar cipher, subtract D from each letter. So using modular arithmetic, we're going to decode this message. 
write it out here. I X C C B Z X C C B. All right, so we change each of these to numbers. Scroll up here so I can just see that. I is 8. X is 23. C is 2. 2 again. 1. 25. X is 23. C is 2. 2, 1. Oops. Okay. Because this is the Caesar cipher, my keyword is the letter D. which gets encoded as the number three. So now because I'm decoding, I need to go three places backwards to figure out what the message said, right? To encode with Caesar, we went three places forwards. So now I have to go three places backwards. So what should I do, add or subtract? Subtract. Okay, so eight minus three is five. 23 minus 3 is 20. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 2. 22. 23 minus 3 is 20. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 2. All right, so the numbers that are already between 0 and 25, you can change right to letters. So the number 5, that is F. And the number 20, U. Okay, negative 1. Oof, how do I get, how do I figure out what negative 1, what letter corresponds to negative 1? Z, how do you get it? And wrapped around the other way, yeah. So if A is 0 and B is 1, right, so if I go to the left of A, that wraps me back around to Z, which is negative 1. Or... What else could I do to figure out what negative 1 is? Add 26. You can always add or subtract 26. And it will correspond to the same place in the alphabet. Yeah. Uh, not write down the negative 1 and just write, um, yeah. That's fine. So negative 1 and 25 are the same place in the alphabet. They both correspond to the letter Z. So negative 1, that's 25, another Z. Negative 2, that would be what? Y. Add 26 to it. Negative 2 plus 26 is 24, and 24 corresponds to Y. All right, you finish decoding. OK, so what's it decode to? Fuzzy, wuzzy. So I chose that phrase because I needed to have some negatives come out. So I needed some Z's and some Y's to show you what to do when you get a negative. <clears throat> okay. So our next new code. So really we haven't learned a new code, right? This is Caesar all over again. We're just doing it with numbers now instead of looking at the shift in the letters. Okay, so now we're going to learn a new code. And this one works just like we did with Caesar, but instead of adding the same letter to each letter of our message, we're going to use a keyword and repeat it over and over and over again. So if my phrase is um, raccoon, I want to encode the message raccoon. And I want to encode it with the keyword ape. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So I'm going to change these to numbers, right? You write down the phrase, change it to numbers. So this is sort of a standard first step. So R is 17, okay, 17, 0, 2, 2, and then O is 14, and what then? 13. Okay. So now, if I was going to do Caesar, I would just write the letter D over and over here. 
But to make this a little more complicated, instead of writing the same letter over and over, I'm going to use a word. I'm going to use the keyword ape. So I write ape over and over. And you might not be able to write the whole word at the end. You just write it as many times as you can. Ape, ape, ah. Okay. Then we convert the, the words of the key, the letters of the keyword into numbers. So A is zero. P is 15 and E is 4. So I have 0, 15, 4, 0, 15, 4, 0. And then when you're encoding, you add, right? Encoding, add, decoding, subtract. So encode, you add. So 17 plus 0 is 17. 0 and 15 is 15. 2 and 4 is 6. 2 and 0 is 2. 14 and 15 is 29, 14 and 4 is 28, and 13 and 0 is 13. What's 18? Oh, 14 and 4, yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, so then we change these to letters, and if they're too big, you just do a quick subtract 26. Right. So 17, that is R. 15 is P, and 6 is G, B, 29, um, to get, a, that's fine, great, 2 is C, not B, you're right, thank you. So 29 is too big, it's not between 0 and 25, so to make it a number between 0 and 25, Subtract 26. 29 minus 26 is 3. And the letter, the number 3 corresponds to the letter D. Good. And then 18, what's that? S and 13 is 10. There we go, encoded. All right, so what do you think? Is Visionaire a substitution cipher? Why not? Yep. The right. Yeah. So the N stays N, and my yeah my C's get coded to two different things, right? I start with C and I end with G, and then I start with C and I end with C. Right, and then same thing with the O's, right? One O gets encoded to D, and the other O gets encoded as an S. Yeah, it's because of the keyword. So this is not a substitution cipher, which makes it stronger and harder to break. <laughs> to decode Visionaire, you just subtract the keyword. Right? So it's just like encoding, except when you decode, subtract your numbers. Right? All right, so I'm going to let you try to decode this message. The keyword is tricks, and there's your encoded message. All right, let's go through it together. So my phrase that I'm trying to decode is T-I-M-C. H I S F W J. Change these to numbers, right? So T is 19, I is 8, M is 12, 2, 7, 8, 18, 5, 22, 9. Okay, and then my keyword is tricks. Right, so I write my keyword underneath over and over. Tricks, tricks, T R. Okay. Change the letters of the keyword to numbers. So T is 19, R is 17, I is 8, and X is 23. So then we have 19, 17, 8, 23, 19, 17. 
Okay, now because we're decoding, you subtract your two numbers, right? When you're encoding using this method, you add the two numbers. When you're decoding to undo what you did when you encoded, undo addition, subtract. 19 minus 19 is 0. What is 8 minus 17? Negative 9. Yeah. So if you have problems with adding and subtracting and, and signed numbers, you, you can use a calculator on this, right? Um, if the top number is smaller than the subtracting number, you should get a negative. Um, and if you, to make it easier, if you want to do 8 minus 17, if that's hard for you, you, do, you just do 17 minus 8 and make it negative. Right? You can just change the order and then make it negative. So what's 12 minus 8? 4. 2 minus 23? Negative 21. Negative 21. Um, quick shortcut is to do the 23 minus 2, right? Because that feels more natural to us. Um, and you get positive 21. But because I'm doing the smaller number minus the bigger number, it comes out negative. Negative 21. 7 minus 19. Negative 12, because 19 minus 7 is 12, and it's negative because the negative numbers on the smaller numbers on top. 8 minus 17 is negative 9. 18 minus 8 is 10. 5 minus 23, negative 18. 22 minus 19 is 3, and 9 minus 17, negative 8. Okay. Now, any number that's already between 0 and 25, change it directly to a letter. So I'll do all those first. So my 0, that's an A. My 4 is an E. My 10 is a K. And my 3 is a D. All right, everything else is negative. And I have to figure out what letter those negative numbers correspond to. So I take mod 26, right? I just, I can always add or subtract 26, and I'll get the same letter of the alphabet. So negative 9 plus 26, 17. 15 and 9 would just be 24. Yeah, so you just compensated the wrong direction. All right, negative 21 plus 26 is 5. Negative 12 plus 26, 14. Negative 9 plus 26, 17. Negative 18 plus 26, 8. Negative 8 plus 26, 18. All right, then I look these up. 17 is R. 5 is F. 14 is O. 17 is R. 8 is I. And 18 is S. So my message is R4 kids. Because that's what tricks are. <laughs> okay, so since Visionaire is not a substitution cipher, it is stronger than substitution, harder to break, but because we use the keyword over and over and over and over again, someone who's motivated enough could use um, sort of a, a variation of frequency analysis to figure out your code. Right, and there are people who are really motivated. Right, they really want your credit card number. All right, so now we're going to take a look at our final and most complex encryption method. It's called Auto Key. So this is a variation on Visionaire. It starts out just like Visionaire. It uses modular arithmetic and a keyword, but this time instead of writing the keyword over and over and over again. We're just going to write it once, and for the rest of the second line, we're going to use the message itself to encode the message instead of using the keyword over and over. So for example, we'll use auto key to encode the message Bruce Willis, and our keyword is going to be tux. So I start writing out my phrase, my message, Bruce. Willis. Okay. Change these to numbers and I get one. Can somebody just read them off to me? All 
Great. Okay. So we've got Bruce Willis changed to numbers. My keyword is tux. So we start just like Visionaire. I write the keyword underneath the message, but I don't, I only write it once. I don't continue writing it. After I write my one keyword, I'm going to start rewriting my message underneath here. So after tux, I'm going to start writing the message, Bruce will, that's all I have room for, Bruce will. And then I encode the same way I would encode using Visionaire. I have to change all these letters to numbers. So T, what's T? 19, U is 20, and X is 23. Okay. So 19, 20, 23 is my keyword tux. And then I already have the numbers for Bruce Will because I have them from here. 1, 17, 20, 2, 4, 22, 8, 11. Right, so I'm encoding, so I add. Encoding is add. So I just add my numbers. 1 and 19 is 20. 17 and 20 is 37. 20 and 23 is 43. 2 and 1 is 3. 17 and 4 is 21. 42, 10, 15, 33, 16, 29. Any number already between 0 and 25 can go directly to a letter. So 20 I know is U. And 37, that's too big. How do I figure out what letter of the alphabet 37 is? Subtract 26. 37, right, because I can always add or subtract 26, whichever one will help me, right? 37 is too big, so I'm going to take 26 away. Right, so what's 37 minus 26? 11. And 11 is L. And then 43, too big, so I subtract 26. What? 17. And 17 is R. 3 is already a perfect sized number. It's already between 0 and 25. I can just um, decode, um, encode it to a D, right? 21, already between 0 and 25. What's 21? V. 42 is too big, so I subtract 26, and I get 16. And 16 is Q. 10, already between 0 and 25. K. And 15, what is it, P? Uh, 33 is too big, so I subtract 26. What am I left with? 7, oops. 7, and that is H, you said? Okay. 16 is Q. And 29, too big, subtract 26, and I get 3, which is D. Okay, so I have encoded it. So I have taken my message that makes sense, Bruce Willis, and encoded it so it now is unreadable. All right. So it's not hard to encode, right? The, the procedure for encoding, keyword, message itself. And then it works just like Caesar, just like Visionaire, you just add the numbers. Decoding auto key is a little bit trickier. Why is it trickier? What makes this hard? The message itself was used to encode the message. So how do you decode the message if you don't know the message? If you know the keyword, you can at least get the first few letters of the message, right? So we'll start with that. So let's say I want to um, decode this message, H-U-I-V, Z-P-H-O, what? Okay. D-F-D-W-B-S-G. All right, my keyword is patriots. 
So I can put Patriots in here under keyword. But I can only write it once, because this is auto key. Visionaire, I would just write it over and over again, and I could subtract, and I'd be done. Right? But I don't know what goes here. The original message, the decoded original message is what was here when I encoded. So I have to just leave that blank for now. I don't know what the message is. So I can at least decode the first few letters of my message. All right, so let's see. H, somebody just read off the letters to me. Seven. Thank you. Okay, so there's my message changed to numbers and then Patriots. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I can decode because my keyword is eight letters, right? I can decode the first eight letters of my message. So because I'm decoding, should I add or subtract? Subtract, right? Encoding adds, so to undo it, you subtract. All right, so 7 minus 15 is negative 8. 20 minus 0 is 20. 8 minus 19 is negative 11. 21 minus 17 is 4. 25 minus 8 is 17. 15 minus 14 is 1, 7 minus 19 is negative 12, and 14 minus 18 is negative 4. Did I do all those right? All right, so if it's a negative, it's too small, right? I need it to be between 0 and 25 to figure out what letter it is. So if it's too small, should I add or subtract 26? Add 26. So negative 8 plus 26 is 18. 20 is fine. I can just leave that. Negative 11 plus 26? 15. 4 is fine. Leave it. 17, 1, all fine. Negative 12 plus 26? 14. And negative 4 plus 26, 22. All right, then I change these to letters. All right, so 18 is F. Oh, S. Okay, 20, U, 15, R, 1 is B. O, W. So we have an idea that this is probably going to say Super Bowl something, right? Yeah, guys, uh, say that again. Take whatever is there and yeah, now I know the beginning of the message. This is what is used to encode the was used to encode the rest of the message, right? So go back to when we were encoding, right? I wrote the keyword and then the message itself, starting at the beginning of the message. So once you've decoded the first few letters of the message, you can bring them up here so that you can use them to decode. So I'm going to write the first few letters of my message after the keyword, because that's what I use to decode the rest of the message. I needed the message itself, which I decoded in the first block. So I know what these numbers are because I have them written up above here. They are 18, 20, 15, 4, 21, 14. And then again, I'm decoding. So I subtract 3 minus 18 negative 15, 5 minus 20 is negative 15, 3 minus 15 is negative 12, 22 minus 4 is 18, 
21 minus 17 is 4, 18 minus 1 is 17, 6 minus 14 is negative 8. All right, if they're too small, add 26. Negative 15 plus 26 would be 11, 11. Negative 12 plus 26 is 14. 18 is fine, 4 is fine, 17 is fine. Negative 8 plus 26 is 18. Okay, so then I look these up, and I have L, L, O, 18 is S, 4 is E, 18 is R, and 18 is S. <laughs> Sad but true. When you're decoding, every, most people can do this part fine, right? Use the keyword to decode the first part. Then you have to use the decoded message here. So the common mistake is that people will use the encoded letters. They'll start rewriting H-U-I, H-U-I-V here. So you, can't, you have to do some work first before you can fill these letters in. You have to decode the first piece of the message and use that to decode the rest. Okay, so now you have um, a little time to practice these new methods. I'll be around to help you if you need it.